This particular project that has come uh, through the Chief Minister's Innovative Fund, which was accepted, uh, this is totally focused on capacitating children and women on the loin of our traditional Naga traditional uh, weaving. And this is a year long program, so we are going to five districts, uh, namely Kohiva, Maluri, uh, Noklag, then we're also going to Beren, then we're going to Peck, and any other district, aspiring district who would be interested to take this capacity training. So we are the implementing agency, and this particular initiative is of Exotic Echo. And uh, we wanted to do this because we've been doing this for the last 15 years in capacitating more than 500 weavers. And we wanted to also advocate and also make women aware of their rights, especially on the weaving sector, because there's so many schemes that is meant for the the uh, artisans, but it is not made known to them. So this is also an opportunity to collaborate with allied departments who are for women empowerment, but also these schemes are implemented to the right beneficiaries. So we wish to be the gap, bridging the gap um, uh, facilitators. So we designed the module in such a way that children of any age, starting from 7 to 13, that is the best age to learn, you know, from the basic. So once the basic foundation is built, we are also not saying that these children and women who are learning are being capacitated should become weavers. But it is also with this idea and intention that our traditional loin look does not die. So today we see a lot of vocational uh, activities going on. Why not our traditional art? Why not basket weaving? Why not weaving? And to be honest, this is a dying art because women have stopped weaving for various reasons. It is not just how uh, women are quoted all oh, lazy as a There are many factors. Today, if you speak and interview um, artisans from different age groups who have been continuing the art silently, some on a commercial basis, some uh, on orders, there are varieties and categories. I think we need to spend more time with our artisans and share the stories. And from there, we will get to know what we can do, rather than pointing fingers that, oh, my Kimano Lisi has said. But with this modern technology that is also coming in, it is becoming a challenge with innovation that is coming in, with digitalizing. Um, I'm not too much on digitalizing because if we don't protect our patterns and designs of our traditional um, designs, this can be commercialized in large scales which you cannot stop big production houses. That is where indigenous people like us are going to be at the losing end. We are also talking about modernizing. So I want to take this opportunity in this platform that um, when we digitalize number one and when we want to popularize we need to keep in mind is the community benefiting or it's the individual benefiting who is doing it. So a lot of times you will see individuals promoting community work or the community name, but they are profiting for themselves. And the community at large is left behind. So I think these are some of the things we have to be sensitive, mindful, and ask the right questions. And this is debatable, I'm telling you, because a lot of people will say that nobody is picking it up, so I'm doing it, so you should be grateful to me. But I think it's the intention. And uh, artisans should be uh, given platforms to voice out the good side, the bad side, and also areas where they want to improve and grow. And it is safeguarding our interests only. And as indigenous Naga community, I think it's very important to respect each other's culture. So if I'm Zeliang, well, I am Zeliang, and I take an Angami shawl uh, and I cut into pieces because I like uh, or I have a better idea to present it. I think it's important to take and seek permission from the community that I have this idea, would you mind if we can collaborate? So I think taking permission doesn't mean it will be a yes. So the rejection should not be taken negatively. And the promotion of our culture should be done in the right way because today we will see a lot of our celebrities and popular figures are fusioning our attires. And people are confused which is authentic and which is not. So I think through this platform we are also trying to educate uh, many people who are uh, wanting to promote our culture but we want to say that these are the do's and don'ts and we must respect and there's a thin line for it. So through this project uh, we want to also uh, collaborate with departments like as such we have done today with art and culture which is the right platform um, who has been safeguarding at the same time promoting and preserving through documentation and also through the women's resource department because they work with women 
of different stakeholders. So we look forward uh, women and children who are capacitated and will be receiving the seed money through a model, a business model that they will be designing. They would also get ample uh, opportunity for different departments uh, to handhold and also to grow and become sustainable in itself. And uh, perhaps our other intention is to safeguard the interests of our community and our natural resources because there's a lot of uh, sense of exploitation that is happening where people are taking credit of identifying our natural resources, which has been there for so many years, but they seem to say that, oh, we found it. So I want to take um, and say that some of us are waking up. So uh, I hope that this waking up and awakening will help others to be mindful of their community. And every community has a right to say not to misuse the natural resources and tradi traditional attires. Uh, and that doesn't mean that we are being regressive. A lot of people have quoted us like that, that we are being regressive, we are being too strict. But our traditional attires have meanings, have our history, our our sentiments are involved, and it's not a cloth that can be made into um, uh, a sofa cover or uh, something to be laid out on events. And I think this is something that our people also need to understand. Our traditional shawl is not for tablecloth. It is not a table mat. It is not a doormat. It is a heroic and also a history storytelling. And unless we respect that, nobody's going to respect that. So how we tell our story is very important. So I hope that helps. Yeah. So we're looking out for 100 weavers in five districts, as I've mentioned, and this is only for the interested children and women potential weavers and people who have experiences. So for example, uh, skilled uh, weavers who are good in mekela making and shawl, they do not know how to do cushion covers and table runners. So that's diversifying the uh, art of weaving into other products. And many of the weavers who know uh, and have learned how to make table runners and cushion covers, don't know how to do shawls or intricate design. So every skill set is different. So we want to catch hold of the potential weavers and also see how we can amplify them in areas where they need to learn. So it can be design thinking, it can be weaving, learning from the base, it can be about natural dyeing, it is also about using natural yarns. Like today we have Kekue, you know, she is a master weaver. So we would be using her help in facilitating sessions where she can educate weavers on how to use metal. Another thing we want to educate is that you cannot take away the natural yarns from the indigenous community. You can take the final product, you can place orders, but not in bulk, because that is very um, something to be questionable, you know. And we've got limited products for that. So natural yarns, how do you use that? So Exotic Echo has been working on growing back our natural cotton. So uh, a lot of these weavers as farmers have been able to uh, work between agriculture and weaving. And these two goes hand in hand. So it is through this training we would be capacitating children how to grow their plants, at the same time learn how to weave, produce, and also have a thinking, uh, design thinking from a young age. So it's not necessary a person has to become a weaver, but it is to have them the foundation as an indigenous woman, you know, from the Naga community, that we know something and I'm proud of something. So it's part of your identity. I think there's a huge identity crisis. So today I'm wearing um, a mekela, or maybe we, all of us are wearing a traditional attire. Most of us don't even know what we're wearing. So I think that's where the base of education starts from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.